Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about 10 books that have brooding heroes in them. So brooding heroes in my eyes are like heroes that are kind of like grumpy and um, hard on the outside. All these heroes are very broody, some more so than others. So let's dive right in into the recommendations. First we have Reese Winterborn from Marrying Winterborn by Lisa Kleypas. This is book number two, a part of the Ravenel series. Please read book one before this one. Book one is my least favorite in the series, but you need to read book one to get the amazingness of book two. Book two is a masterpiece. It is beautifully written and the love story in here is amazing but you need to read book one because the side characters in book number one is this couple and them like meeting and getting to know each other. So this is a historical romance obviously and so um, Reese Winterborn owns like um, this giant chain of very popular stores and in book one you get to see how he has been in this a uh, set up relationship with uh, Lady Helen Ravenel. He wants her so badly, but he ends up distancing himself from her and just becomes very standoffish. And you learn why in the book, but he is brooding the entire book. He's known for being very brooding to society and kind of like isolates himself. Um, from other people. It's just about Lady Helen and Winterborn like slowly starting to realize that they like each other even though it was kind of like a set up arrangement between the two. More so for Helen. Reese, right when he sees her knows that he wants her uh, but Helen is kind of hesitant to uh, because of how society views Reese and how Reese puts himself in society like and how he acts. Their love story is epic though and you, <laughs> you need to read it. Next is A Hunger Like No Other by Cressley Cole. This is a paranormal romance. This is the first book in the the Immortals After Dark series. Now this is a romance between a Valkyrie slash vampire who is the heroine, the hero who is a Lycae who is kind of like a werewolf. Man is this dude brood central. So Lachlan, that's the hero's name, he has been in captivity like underground for years. He's like I think by vampires if I'm not mistaken. He's basically like put in ch chains like been chained up for years. One day when he's chained up he ends up smelling like the land above him. He can smell that far away. And um, he comes across the scent of his mate and he's like, oh my gosh. He ends up breaking himself out of his bonds. He ends up breaking his leg in, in the, to, to like escape. He's like, the only way I can find her because he doesn't want to lose her. Like she knows he's like, he knows she's like walking around up on land and he doesn't want to lose her scent. And so he's like, the only way I know I can save her and like get to her and find her is if I break my leg. And that's the only way I can get out of these bonds. And so that's what he does. He breaks his leg for this woman. And so then he finally catches up to his mate and just so happens to be half vampire who is his sworn enemy. <laughs> He gets very broody. Um, he's very put off by the fact that she is part vampire. Um, and she's just like, who the F are you? This is who I am? Deal with it. <laughs> he is just very sulky throughout some of this. And is like very put off by the, by the fact that she's part vampire. Um, but he slowly starts to love her for who she is. Next I have Bound to the Battle God by Ruby Dixon. This is for book number one, a part of the Aspect and Anchor series. I really recommend you reading the novella first, which is The King's Spinster Bride. That book is so good. That one's only like a hundred something pages. This one is like 600 plus pages. This is a fantasy romance and is very slow burn. This also deals a lot with a made up sort of mythology dealing with gods. I hear one in here, she lives on earth. She like, she's from earth. She has a job on earth. She has a woman from earth. But then one day like a portal opens up in her apartment complex and it sucks her into a fantasy land. And she is stuck there and she has no idea what's going on. Um, and then one day, like there's just like, there's this thing that happens um, in their like mythology world where there's like a bunch of different gods. And this one is about Aaron the Cleaver, I think that's his name. And he is the battle god. And so the father of all these gods in the heavens, you know, um, decides to do this thing. I forget the name of it, but basically he casts out a bunch of his children, his godly children, once every something hundred years to basically prove themselves and like to live as mortals almost to prove themselves that they can live back in the sky with all the other gods. Aaron gets on, ends up being cast onto the earth again. For a god to live on an immortal plane, they have to have a mortal anchoring them to the plane. The mortal is linked to him, they eat for them, sleep for them, basically just do anything exhausting for the god. Like the god 
does nothing, you know? And so her heroine doesn't know what she's getting into, but she agrees to be his anchor, not knowing what the job entails. Um, and so she basically has to follow him everywhere. And she was doing it in hopes that he could help her find her home, her way back to Earth. He is very arrogant. <laughs> That's his main characteristic in here is being arrogant and broody. They basically travel throughout this land. Um, they're both trying to complete tasks of their own, but they can't be too far away from each other because if they do, she starts to become in pain, I guess. I don't remember. I, I think so. This book is so slow burn. You don't see any romance till the later part of it or any romance pay off, you know what I mean. <laughs> it is worth it. The slow burn part in here is so worth it. Next I have Tomboy by Avery Flynn. This is book number three, a part of the Hardigans series. Um, this is a, I think he plays hockey, right? Yeah, he, this is about Zach and he plays for the Ice Knights, which is a hockey team. So Zach is uh, very much targeted by the public for being a rude, crude guy. He has a lot of, uh, paparazzi coming up to his door, a lot of um, just people saying rude stuff about him um, because of his aggressiveness on the uh, hockey rink. And he of course has gotten into some fights as well. So he's, he's just a brooding dude, he broods. Um, <laughs> and so then um, he ends up getting the flu and is like, I don't wanna leave my house. I don't want this paparazzi coming after me. And so his PR manager asks her best friend um, to come to his house and to treat him because his PR manager's best friend is a doctor and so she very reluctantly goes to his house he tries to like shoo her away she's like no uh, your PR manager sent me I'm here to treat you for the flu and he's like fine whatever come in and so he is very grumpy and um just kind of like just hates his life at the moment and the way that people treat him our heroine like tries to get through to his interior tries to get through all that hard exterior and um they reluctantly fall for one another it's kind of like hate to love at the beginning um, they don't really like one another, <laughs> but then obviously I think through them spending time and her treating him and getting to know him more, um, he realizes how great of a woman she is. Then I have The Mafia and His Angel by Lila James. This is a mafia romance and man, mafia people, mafia dudes are so brooding y'all. The hero of this book is Alessio. He is a mafia ruler, mafia killer. The other character in this book is Isla. She is forced to be engaged to um, Alessio's sworn mafia enemy, sworn enemy in the mafia world. And so she is abused by this man day in and day out. And then one day she ends up escaping and she finds this limo on the side of the road. She dives into it, not thinking much of it, not knowing who this limo belongs to, ends up driving away and it parks in front of this house. And she's just like, I, I need to get out of here. And so she just runs into this house and just finds a room and hides under the bed. Alessio ends up finding her there, doesn't know who this woman is and just like thinks she's there to spy on him or something. So he like very reluctantly allows her to stay in his house and to cook and clean for him with the other woman in the house. Um, they slowly start to fall for one another. Um, he is very, very dangerous man. There, this is part number one. There's two more parts after this surrounding the same couple. Um, so there's a lot of this story. I just think any mafia man is brooding, so that's why I put him on this list. Then we have It Ain't Me Babe by Tilly Cole. This is a motorcycle club romance. Um, our heroine in here, she was a part of a cult. And one day when she was young, she's like crying in front of the outskirts of her cult. There's like this fence and our hero in here sticks. When he's younger, he, him and his father are walking in the woods. He ends up getting separated from his father. He sees this girl in front of this fence and sits down in front of her and they don't say anything. Um, they just look at one another and um, they end up separating and they end up going on with their lives. It is years later, Salome, the heroine of this book, ends up escaping that cult. And by doing so, she like gets all bloodied and bruised and ends up passing out in an alley. And that alley just so happens to be um, the alley behind the motorcycle club that Styx now runs. Um, Styx finds her and is like, oh my gosh, this is the girl that I saw in the woods. And he's always been fat infatuated in like, wondered about this woman. He takes her into his club. He starts to fall for her. They fall for one another. It is beautiful. I love their story. Um, he is brooding in the fact that he has a stutter and he uses sign language to communicate with people, but because of his stutter, he's been bullied a lot in the past when he was a kid. That's why he signs mostly. So because of his bullying that he's experienced, he's become very broody, very grumpy, very standoffish, for everyone except for Salome. Then we have Marriage for One by Ella Mays. This is a marriage of convenience story. This is about Jack and Rose. Rose has always wanted to start up, I think like a, I think it's like a coffee shop or something, but like a restaurant of some sort. 
and like Jack realizes this and is like, I'll, I'll agree to marry you and you can have enough money to open up the shop you've always wanted. And she's like very baffled by this because they don't know one another. Um, she doesn't know how he knows that uh, she wanted to open up this place, but she agrees. Um, because this has been her lifelong dream to own this place. She is very confused by this man because he, like he proposed to marry her and like he ha is nothing but kind of like a mean and like rude and puts her at an arm's length and broods and is grumpy and she's like why did he propose to me if this was was how he's gonna act with me and so this is kind of like a dislike to love because they both don't really like one another when they get married. Through them spending time together, having to be close to one another, they slowly start to fall for one another and the romance in here is kind of like epic, but Jack obviously has some secrets in his past that gets revealed. Then we have Easy by Tamara Weber. This is a college romance. Our hero and heroine meet at the beginning of the book because our heroine um, is about to get sexually assaulted and the hero ends up saving her and she is um, like she is so grateful for this man. It turns out this guy who saved her is in the one of her college classes. He is kind of like the artistic, shy, loner dude, and she's very intrigued by him after this point. And she's very grateful for what he did. This book talks a lot about sexual assault, so if that's not your thing um, and you get triggered by it, don't read it, okay? It's a main plot in here and the heroine like learns how to love herself and learns how to protect herself from those who would do those things to her. And the hero encourages this and helps her get through the trauma that she has faced. But at the beginning, she's just like wanting to get to know him and he's just like dark and broody and doesn't really want to affiliate himself with her and is like putting her at arm's length and she just doesn't know why. <laughs> then I have A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. This is a fantasy romance. So this is about Kat who is pretending to be a soothsayer at a traveling circus in this fantasy land. Kat is hiding and pretending to be a soothsayer in the circus because she's hiding from somebody. Someone is trying to find her because she might, may or may not be a magical being called a kingmaker. Griffin who is just walking around with his crew one day, ends up across Cat at this circus and knows immediately that she is the Kingmaker. So he decides to kidnap her and take her back to his kingdom so that she can protect his sister who is on the throne. So it's a traveling kidnapping romance and he won't reveal any of his things to her. Like he won't reveal his past, his life at all like he just wants to take her back to his city his town and be done with her basically he just wants to get this trip over with so that her his sister could finally have protection um and he does not like how cat is there to backtalk him and to basically um square up with him at every point i feel like both of them brood in their own way he broods she broods because of this horrible awful situation that they're in with one another, but they end up putting themselves in the situation. So they got nothing to say at that point. And lastly, I have Entreat Me by Grace Draven. This is another fantasy romance book, and this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. This is about Bellard and his first wife hated him, hated him so much. She ends up giving birth to their son. She ends up dying and on her last dying wish, dying breath, she ends up cursing Bellard and her son. And it's basically like the beast's curse in Beauty and the Beast. Um, this takes place years later and um, his son is now grown up. The heroine in this book, her name is Lou and she is a widow and her younger sister is being courted by um, a very strange man she doesn't know anything about. She learns that her sister has ended up running away with this man to his home who is who lives in a castle and may or may not be the same son as Bullard. And so she goes to get her sister to take her back home. But then she meets Ballard and her and Ballard start to fall for one another. And then her sister and his son end up falling for each other. Um, Ballard is the one in here who's very brooding. I feel like any beast character in Beauty and the Beast is quite brooding. They don't like the situation that they've been in. They're obviously cursed to be ugly and just like hating their life, you know, because of the curse that's been put on them. They slowly start to fall for one another, obviously. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but I really love this one, y'all. This one is so good. I love Grace Draven, obviously. So there you have it. Those are some brooding hero recommendations for you. Please let me know if you have any recommendations down in the comments section down below and if you have read any of these books. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.